are live. Yes. All right, everybody. I am Aaron, and this guy over here is. My name's Chris, Mr. Care of Science. I'm the Handy Outdoor one. Nerd, and this is the AC Show, the coolest show on YouTube. This is episode five of our weekly stream. So thank you for those who are uh, tuning in. I'm taking my gloves off because my hands are warm now. <clears throat> I right. thought it was the coolest show on YouTube, so you wear mittens. Well, it, well I got this on still. But oh. My hands are getting a little toasted. So uh, tonight we actually have a special guest. Ah, yes. And that special hey. guest is... Hey. What? Where? Oh, Brian! I, I was I was watching. Sorry. So, uh, Brian is our special guest tonight on the AC Show. It's the coolest know, show Brian. on the internet. YouTube. <laughs> it's the coolest show on YouTube. So, if you all don't know Brian, he goes by BB3D. That's me. And, and so he's got his own YouTube channel. <clears throat> so I'm pretty sure most of you have already seen and heard of Brian. And if you've not heard of Chris, aka Mr. Carol Science, right over here. I see him. You know, I'm, I'm trying to pop <laughs> out chat so that I can kind of keep an eye on chat. Too, so. He's got his own YouTube channel. And, and we go back really, and forth. Really, really good. Like, yeah. so good. <laughs> he, does, he does Mr. Carol Science 3000. <laughs> <laughs> I so I actually did that uh, recently. <laughs> I because now I te I teach robotics, and one of our one of our projects we decided to do was I told the kids I said you know computers and robots are really really stupid. They only do exactly what you tell them to do, but they don't have any common sense. So you can't just tell a robot go forward five feet. You have to program the robot to do the specific movements it needs to do that. So I told them to write a program for making a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And then we had the Mr. Carol Bot 3000 made a peanut <laughs> butter and jelly sandwich for them, following their program exactly. And so if they didn't have every single little tiny detail, like it, hilarity ensued. That's a, I'll, I'll, I'll just say that. <laughs> so it looks like we got one Raz and TK in the house in chat. Thank you guys for uh, joining the stream. I hope that with the uh, switching of the time and the day that everyone will be able to uh, tune in more often. <laughs> I'm in chat too. Yes, Brian, but you're also on the video. But I'm not acknowledged, so. <laughs> I just acknowledged you in the video. Well, I know, but I was typing that, so I had to say it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. Hi, TK. <laughs> Hi, Mr. Carroll. Hey, what's up? <laughs> Mr. Oh, what's Carroll that? Science 3000. That's so the first thing. Time, but. <laughs> so first thing we're going to uh, do tonight is we do, a, do the usual cool prints. So I'm going to uh, share my screen and show a cool print that I uh, saw. All right, there's that. Bam. All right, so this is a 3D printed ax head. I mean, can't get any cooler than that. I mean, look at that. That's quite smooth. Yeah, is it SLA? <clears throat> well, give me a second. Um, no, that was all printed on a uh, an FDM printer, or I'm pretty sure. Wow, it's, yeah. it's SLA. It's sanded like amazing. Well, you can see the the uh, actual pits in it right there. It's but, very yeah. textured. Yeah, I mean the the person did a great job. I'm pretty sure it was printed in uh, a couple parts. So yeah, okay. So he he does have it airbrushed. And that's why it looks like so he did he did actually get it completely finish it. Okay. Oh man. <laughs> yeah, but how do you sand it so smooth with all that detail in there and then airbrush it? I mean that's well the 
the channels and you know the carved part of it can, doesn't have to be smooth inside. You just need it smooth on the outside. Yeah, and I mean, as long as if he is printed in a couple of pieces, that's just going to be flat. So that's going to be the top surface. So all he's got to do is just have it set to a really fine uh, print quality. Hmm. So 0 0.1 on your layer height. <clears throat> and that would make it do. I think I will grab it. So, and my next one that I have you is, have your a, is another print that has been finished as well. But this I one, like that. I, and I, I, I came across it and I was like, ooh, this is really cool. I would totally print one of these just to set on my desk. I would like any kind of Corvette, though, honestly. <laughs> it looks like it. That looks like something out of like Nausicaa or something. Yeah, it, it does remind me of um, <clears throat> uh, Castle in the Sky a little bit. That is neat. Yeah, so, did you see Nausicaa? I said that, yes. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah uh, it is from Nausicaa. So it looks oh, I was right. Ah! So, it is. Valley <laughs> of the Winds. So, yeah, I mean, he. He did a fantastic job finishing that. And I mean, he's got a lot of pictures. <clears throat> but I mean, it's very detailed and the weathering yeah. on it is really great. Yeah, great detail. He did really good on the, uh, the paint job for it. One of these days, I'd like to spend more than 30 seconds attempting to sand something different. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously this one's a little closer, so you can see some of the imperfections around it, around here. But it turned out really good. That's awesome looking. So, so yeah, I'm, I'm quite impressed with it. Now, how big is that? Um, let me see. This episode is sponsored by CR10 Pro. Oh, wait. So, so obviously, <laughs> it was done. Uh, yeah. Uh, looks like model size is 24 centimeters long, 30 centimeters wide. That's big ish. 30, 30 centimeters wide is about 12 inches. Yeah, which makes sense if you print it on the CR10. So, but <clears throat> all right. So that is my cool prints that I've kind of come across and thought this would be really cool. <clears throat> I mean, it's kind of it's kind of inspiring to see someone finish something so well that you can't tell that it was 3D printed. I oh, think yeah. it's great to see someone finish something at all because I have so many half finished things that <laughs> I, I just have unfinished like I'm like oh that thing's supposed to be green I gotta buy some green filament like that's that's how it goes with me usually I spend about 30 seconds sanding and I'm like man how come it's turning white it's not even the color anymore and then I just give up on it I'll that's show you the <clears throat> the last 3d print that I actually finished because I've not been able to finish one in a while. Why not? Have a baby. Oh, that doesn't help. <clears throat> All right. So this, this is the last 3d print that I had finished. So I did a Skyrim mask for my friend and I uh, painted, I actually dropped it. So I had to redo it again. Oh no. That was fun. Face painted. It's nice looking. So I got obviously silver specks on blue. Now here's one thing I really like about it. You gotta pay attention to the actual video. You kind of see a little kind of a good haze to it. I have red on there, so whenever you get to a certain angle, you can see the red sheen via light. I like it. So it's got like a, it's kind of got like a rainbow color change effect to it. Almost. Polychromatic paint. Yeah. So, and all the, all that that I did, 
That was with uh, spray paint. Rattle cans for the win. Yep. The uh, I, the ones I like to get, I like to get them at Ace. You will anywhere that that has them. But they've actually got that that wide angle nozzle. They don't do that that kind of spray like that. They they spread it apart like that. So whenever I, I go to coat something, I get more of an even coat on my uh, project. Very so, good. So yeah, there's there's those cool prints. <clears throat> I like it. I I have a few cool prints to show off myself, if I if I may. If I yeah, may. you may. Okay. <clears throat> we so, will allow it this once. <laughs> so a couple projects that I've been working on. That this last week, I've really tried to get a couple of videos like filmed and edited and posted on YouTube like early so that they're ready to go so they automatically come out like at a specific um and one of them that i'm finishing up today <laughs> is uh that was my fault i was one. trying to just trying to move you around <laughs> i i feel like i'm being juggled here there you go um, so i uh i made this little slingshot uh that i printed <laughs> in pet g um i modeled it myself after so i i was watching a video on the slingshot channel have you guys ever seen the slingshot channel i have I'm not jorg sprog the guy's name is and uh he's the one that's like leading this whole movement against youtube because youtube is not supporting small time um content makers Jeez. And so he's the one that's kind of leading the charge against YouTube to try and get people's uh, accounts re-monetized. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? You heard of that? I, uh, I didn't know that there was someone that had a, a major issue with it. I just figured everybody was like, oh, well, I guess that's the rule now, and I'll have to try and meet those new requirements. Oh, no, he's uh, he's actually suing YouTube. There's like a big <laughs> Wow. Thing. It's... No, Remind me, uh, Aaron, maybe next week when we're talking about our other stuff, I can maybe pull up. Um, yeah. yeah, I'll definitely remind like you. Okay. Uh, another thing that I've been working on is uh, some, this is uh, meant for a Nintendo Switch. Nice. You slide, you slide the Joy-Cons straight in here, and then you've got a little handheld controller for a single Joy-Con. There you go. That's cool. That's <laughs> neat. This, this little thing is just, it's amazing. It works so good. Um, and then I, uh, if you watched any of my, my recent, my most recent video from just came out like yesterday, this is my maker coin that was modeled by, uh, well, it was just a couple weeks ago on this same show was uh, by Aaron and I printed it. Yeah. That guy. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, I printed the same thing, just way bigger. Um, and then this one's really cool. This is this is a sneak preview for next week's video right here. So you guys are seeing it first here. But uh, my son has these little uh, toy cars that he likes to throw around a lot. <laughs> and he busted the wheels off. We bought these cars and we had <coughs> wheels busted on the first day, like within 24 hours buying them, they were busted. And um, my wife was like, I bet you could 3D print something. And I was like, I probably could. And so I, I modeled and 3D printed some replacement wheels for it. There it is. So uh, he's very future minded and he's really looking forward to flying cars. I, yeah, I, <laughs> I suppose so. Either that or I don't know. He wants to be a mechanic, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, those are some things that I've been that I've been printing this last week. Other than my my combat robot, but I don't want anyone to steal my ideas. So we can't see that. Yet. TK is headed out. Good night, TK. <clears throat> Later, TK. All right. Now Brian's in the middle. <laughs> <What>? <laughs> now watch this. Ready? I'm going now. Ah. 
<clears throat> you gotta you gotta make it like three it's card being blurry. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we're wacky. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so another subject. <coughs> um, that we're yeah. going to touch on tonight would be Fusion 360. Um, <laughs> so I saw this post on a 3D forum on Facebook. Give now, and the guy had said. Oh, free. Well, nothing's free. Well, that made it sound like Fusion 360 was taking the absolute free version away from people. And that's not the actual case. So I had to go in and kind of look and actually find what I was trying to to, uh, to see. All right. So here. So it <clears> looks <throat> like they changed the, 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 hobby, the free hobbyist one to personal use. Because the yeah. hobbyist one was like a non-commercial use under like something like what a hundred thousand dollars worth of revenue generated by using their product or something or ten thousand dollars yes so it was a hobbyist startup is what it was and so now they've t changed it to a personal use they've changed it to oh, where is it okay it's like there's a separate startup one yeah, so there's a startup one. So there's your there's your personal use one, which is non-commercial. There is a startup instead of being the hobbyist startup. There's a startup, and then then there's your upper tier one. So Fusion okay. 360 for personal use, which is new, and then Fusion 360 for startup, which is new as well. <clears throat> So uh, we remain committed to offer you a free, fully functional commercial-based software with this new subscription type. Additionally, we wanted to ensure that we are able to stay compliant with the, the future. So <clears throat> you have to do a, di a couple different things, but um, later I will actually post this in the, the link for the video so everyone can get in and check it out. Uh, but this is how you apply. You actually click on it to apply. And so, yeah, I mean, it's, it's not going away for free use. You still have your free use. There's, the, yeah. There's still two free tiers. Yeah. Uh, the only thing is with the startup one is, uh, where is to do, 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 do. they actually have to approve your startup one. Okay. Whether it's just asking questions and it's just a computer going, okay, yes, you, you meet our criteria or it is someone going, okay, yeah, yes, you meet the criteria. So See, I wonder if you would need to use the startup licensed here instead of the personal use if you planned on being able to print and sell or yeah, sell and, your sell your models that you so, design with the software. Yeah. So but then the, the question is so is the free non-commercial use are you allowed to make things for people not like to sell the things but make things and kind of make money off of it at all or yeah. do they not want you to do that at all. <clears throat> That's interesting because it's like, like Brian was saying, you know, it used to have a tier of a certain dollar amount, like up to a hundred thousand dollars or something like that. Then you could, yeah, up to like a hundred thousand dollars, something like that. You could, you could use Fusion 360 for free, but now that they have this, these two new tiers, if that's even going to be allowed, like you have, the, you have the education tier and you have, <laughs> um he you have the the personal use tier or whatever and so the the question remains i guess w which one of those is free and is it truly free can i still mo can i model something and post it um as a model that's for sale or 
for the for that to just be free. <clears throat> yeah. So that There's, is definitely the uh, the can thing. Can I that... even post it for other people to download? Yeah. Uh, even even without monetary gain. Yeah. So it's it's the thing that we'll have to kind of look into a little more and check out. I mean, I found out just the other day on this because I saw the post. I was like, ah, oh, crap. Um, <clears throat> that's something that I don't. I hadn't seen anybody talk about. <clears throat> So I, you know, I didn't want to just go off of what someone was saying. Like, oh well, you know, it's not free anymore because we all know how three D printing posts can be. They'll just go, oh well, yeah, you know, this, that, and the other, and it's just kind of a bunch of hogwash. So, yeah, and just briefly, when I when I was looking at that a few minutes ago, that doesn't affect you until your existing <laughs> license is up for renewal, whatever that Correct. license may be. Yeah. So. Let's see mine. When's mine due? I need to log into mine. I haven't been in mine in months because I I do Tinkercad instead of Fusion 360 most of the time. Is that an emergency alert? Yes. Yeah. There's storms around here. Okay. So I was just saying there's a flash flood warning. You're not gonna like get taken away by a tornado or something, are you? Oh no, I'm good. Yeah, tornadoes suck. We're not in Missouri anymore, Toto. <laughs> so, <clears throat> so yeah, I, I wanted that to kind of be touched on a little bit and figured Brian was a um, good person to kind of bring in on that to give his own little bit of an opinion on, on Fusion 360 and they're changing. If I have That's time, my I'd... story and I'm stuck with it. Sticking, sticking with it. That's what I, yeah. Sticking to That's it. That's my sword. I'm sticking to it. Um, <laughs> if I had time, I would, you know, try to hit up. <laughs> Turn my head. There you go. High five, Aaron. Just give me a high five, man. <laughs> You're over here. <laughs> Ow. <laughs> This really hurts. <laughs> uh, we're having too much fun with this. <laughs> Do we still have people in chat? <laughs> Do we have viewers? So well, there's stupid. two watching, and I'm one of them. So I think everybody left. That's <laughs> all right. So I drove tonight. them away. I'm sorry. So tonight. It took away my license for driving people away. So you're no longer an Uber driver? <clears throat> driving them up the wall. Meep, meep. <laughs> All right, so tonight we are going to be talking about the ins and outs of doing a Maker Faire. This sub subject is called Inside and Outside Humidity. All right, so it is... Because I actually did a maker the, uh, the the Ozarks Mini Maker Fair Saturday, and I hadn't ever been to a maker fair before, which was kind of eye opening to actually do this. So because I hadn't done that, I was trying to figure out what I needed to take, what I wanted to do and showcase. <clears throat> I figured I'd, we'd kind of help people out because Brian, Brian, have you been to a maker fair before? I have been to a Maker Faire before. I've have, been you to have you participated three. in a Maker Faire? I've participated by being a <clears throat> person walking around and looking at things, okay. but not as an exhibitor. Chris, have you been to a Maker Faire or participated in one? Never. All, right, you so there's, <clears throat> all right, so there's three different viewpoints. One who has not been to one, one who has been to three, and one who has been to one and actually participated in that one. So <clears throat> the next thing is, uh, what do you want? So you want to do a Maker Faire, <clears throat> and you've decided that you want to be in a booth. So you want to have your own booth set up. So you've come to this conclusion, and you want your own booth set up. I saw the other uh, comment pop up. I had to go click on that. <clears throat> all right, so. <laughs> Sorry, that was just me being dumb. That's all right. <laughs> So what do you want your booth to be about? 
So do you want your booth to be about 3D printing? Do you want it to be about woodworking? Do you want it to be about a science project you've done or that you're working on? <clears throat> Cancel that out. Okay. Um, <laughs> there is no storm. I knew storms were going to happen tonight. I was just like, I know my luck. Storms are going to happen. It's no big deal, guys. There's just like... <laughs> Eight hurricanes just, right outside my door. It's not a problem. All these alarms <laughs> going off. It's not a big deal. It happens all the time. It's not a problem. Uh, <laughs> this is why I have my laptop. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. <clears throat> yeah, I hear so one of my I hear one of my kids crying right now too. One of one of my alarms is going off too. So oh, no. What so do is, you is want your booth you to do? be about? So it, it, it all depends on uh, what your interests are. You know, showcase who you are, what you're passionate about. And if you're passionate about woodworking, 3D printing, uh, making things from old equipment that's from, from old other things yeah if you're repurposing things showing something that can be repurposed that that is a really good thing to to do i actually repurpose things i always use things it drives my wife crazy <laughs> she said you're a hoarder i said i'm not a hoarder i just save stuff so i can use it later and i've done that multiple times previously <laughs> on hoarders <laughs> um <clears throat> so so being that that you you know you figured out what you want it to be about, what are you going to bring to the table? <laughs> uh, <laughs> do you have to bring your own table skirt, or do they provide those? So, um, with doing the uh, the forum for it, they actually it said. Do you want to bring a Are you wanting us to provide you a table or will you supply one? Well, it said it was going to cost like a hundred dollars for them to supply a table. I was like, I ain't doing that. Are they buying a brand new table and then you get to keep it afterwards? <laughs> so, um, I said, no, I'll, I'll, I'll bring my own table. So I brought three tables and they gave me a table to use with a skirt on it. I was like, okay, that's, Different. I wasn't expecting that, but okay, I'll take that. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> again, bringing it to the table kind of ties into what I was talking about. Excuse me, a minute ago on if you're going to be woodworking, 3D printing, science fair stuff, and you can bring a conglomerate of things, which works perfectly fine because you can do science fair stuff with 3D printing. A guy that I met there had a science fair thing that he had 3D printed parts for. That's cool. It was, it was an, actually an automatic plant waterer system. Okay. So he used his 3D printer to print little brackets that you that use the aluminum extrusion, the uh, 20 by 20s. Mm -hmm. And then he had an Arduino on it and a bunch of other stuff. Which was Is that the, the garden bot kind of thing where it's like a long 2020 <laughs> arm that just kind of rides on some rails over like the top it was, of your plant? Yeah, it was, it was kind of like that, yeah. So, and he had a, a little timer on there and a bunch of different little things on there, which, you know, that's it, was, cool. it was pretty cool. So that's, that's one thing he actually has for his science fair that he's on. So he's used 3D printing for a science fair, but he also took it to the maker fair. So, you know, I thought that was a pretty, pretty cool thing to do. Hey, Aaron, I need so, to hop out for a second. Can you just pull me out and then I'll come back and say, All right, <clears throat> now it's just Brian and Aaron, BA. <laughs> All right, <clears throat> making things for the Maker Fair. So this will actually tie into another portion, which we'll get into here in just a minute. But you want to sit there and plan out what you want to do. <clears throat> if you're going to be doing the woodworking, if you're going to be doing 3D printing, whatever you set your, your goals on, what you're going to do. So you've already got your idea of what your booth is going to be about, and you want to go about making things for your booth. So I think 
that if you go to do booth, less is more. Do not sit there and bring all your rolls of filament and a bunch of other stuff. Bring like only what you need. Which, <clears throat> so I took two 3D printers. I had one sitting there, one actually printing. I didn't need to take both 3D printers. I was just going to have one set of printing. I was going to have both printing, but I changed my mind. <clears throat> so I had one printing and then one just kind of set in there with stuff on it to kind of showcase. Right. Um, I had an Iron Man helmet that I 3D printed a couple of years ago that I finally started to put back together. He's back. Yeah. With a mini me. With a mini me. This one's this one's a uh, mini version of his grandpa, but <laughs> the other one's my mini me. His mom <laughs> said it's time for bed, and he said no, vehemently. <laughs> yeah. So he's he's gonna chill with me for a few minutes here. Nice. All right. So so I took my Iron Man helmet that was partly done. I wanted to showcase kind of what three D printing can do kind of the so my booth was 3d printing and that was a big boom of thunder <clears throat> and the um my brain i I, w I should have brought or at least taken a picture of my actual flyer that i had so they gave me a printout of what it was actually saying that my booth was about so i did 3d printing in the real world real real world um <clears throat> The pros and cons of 3D printing um, and kind of showcasing what 3D printing in the real world can do to fix things mm -hmm. and the, the ups and downs of 3D printing. So I had prints that, you know, were printed. I did a, it's a Brigitte, Brigitte, it's a little, it's a, it's a D and D figure. Oh. <clears throat> and I had it scaled up. So it was about you know, six inches tall. And it showcased that even though the print was looking really good, there's all these strings and stuff on the actual print. Mm -hmm. So you can see that, yeah, it can print really good, but you do have all these technical difficulties you do run into with an FDM printer. I mean, you do run into these difficulties not as much with a resin printer, which I have yet to get one. I would love one. So, you know. A lot of people have them now. I am not ready for resin because looking around me at my horrible, not clean, not neat, not organized <laughs> workspace, and the fact that I've got a kid and a pair of cats, and I just know myself. I'm I'm not neat freak enough to be able to properly deal with resin. Oh, I so understand. I think I'm going to wait. 100%. Even though everybody else has the cool new toy, I'm going to wait. But I would recommend if you get a resin printer, don't take it to a Maker Faire with resin <laughs> in there because <laughs> kids are going to try to touch. Unless unless you've got uh, a horseshoe set up for the front part of your booth and then like a table in the back <clears throat> kind of closed off so kids can't touch it. Or a little sign that says, please do not touch the toxic chemicals. <clears throat> yeah, but you Have will. You, you would. You would definitely you need hear? someone. What's that? Did you guys see the story of that guy that burned himself with <laughs> his, resin? his resin? I did. When he was moving his resin printers out to a shed and he got some on him and he didn't think it was a big deal. And then he was out in the sun and sweating for hours and hours. And then it turned into a really big deal. Uh huh. And then the Prusa stole my idea guy, a guy <laughs> like said he was faking it. I got, I got, I got the picture up here. Yeah. <coughs> yep. Nasty man. That, that in and of itself. That is a chemical like, burn, people. You know, I got, I got this, I got this kid right here. There's like, there's no way, there's no way that I'm going to bring a resin printer into my house with, I mean, this kid gets into everything. Like, no, not going to happen. <laughs> Ow, my ribcage. 
So, so yeah, for sure. Less is more for a Maker Faire. Um, just take the essentials of what your booth is about. Don't maybe don't maybe print lots of flyers or something, but yeah. And then, are you going to be selling stuff at the Maker Faire? It's going to cost you to get the selling permit to sell. Usually, they uh, have the application you can fill out, and they turn it in for you. And it's cheaper to do it before, because here it's like five dollars before the Maker Faire, and then once it's the day of, it's ten dollars, which not bad i mean if you sell the stuff you, you're, you're making money back no matter what <clears throat> um <coughs> so what do you need to bring to the maker fair so what what do i yeah so what do i need to bring <clears throat> so once you've got all your stuff printed out made whatever Try to bring something that can haul your stuff if you're going to have multiple things. Because I took these uh, little crate things that had wheels on them that I could wheel all my stuff in and out that would fit in them. Uh, so I took 3D pins, 3D printed catapults, filament, sample filament, which actually I didn't run out of the sample filament doing all that, which was surprising that I was busy for eight hours pretty much doing the 3D pins. Um, <clears throat> I did not run out. So that was kind of nice, but I had my, my filament for backup and actually I used some of my extra little filament that I had separated that I used with 3D pins before I got my sample filament for the 3D pins. Did uh, you did you bring your printers with you, Aaron? Yeah, I had both my printers there. I had my ANET just sitting there and then my Kitty Tech was actually printing. And my Kitty Tech, as the day went on, <clears throat> so the day before I was able to connect to the internet on my phone the day of my 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 computer would not even connect to my phone. It's hotspot. No, but there, there was probably way too much <clears throat> interference. Yeah. So and then the internet there that would have been free, I could not connect to. That just was not going to happen. So I was going to just download a little ball off of Thingiverse to print and for the catapult. That wasn't going to work. So what I did was I modeled really quick. And by modeling, I mean I went into Fusion 360, tossed in a sphere, tossed it to the diameter of the size that I wanted. I took it, pulled it 15 millimeters. Then I hit uh, C for circle for the sketch. And then I selected a plane and actually had it extrude out through the center. So the sphere could print upright without supports. And so it printed all like that as the day went on. So also I had kids able to start their first print on a 3D printer. Cool. So it was pretty much just, okay, go here, hit this button, hit this button, and it starts. You started your first 3D print. Good job. I mean, I, want to ins I wanted to inspire the kids to be able to do this. You know, I wanted, which was perfect for that one compared to the A net where I did the, and then I press this button, press this button, try to go through, and then tell it to print. Yeah. <clears throat> And the the uh, kitty tech was all enclosed. The bed doesn't go forward and back. The arms just move around like this, and the bed lowers down. So correct I, y style. Yep, I had less to worry about with kids putting their hands in there and getting stuck, touching the hot bed. Yeah, I didn't want that to happen. <clears throat> so that's kind of what I did. So you know, I three D printed that ball, and as the day went on, I kept three D printing them, and I just have kids be like, "Oh, you want to start start your first three D print? Okay, yeah. So here, let's come over here." Hit this button here, and there you go. And it just has to start up and go to print. How long did it so take to print the, <clears throat> the balls? It took uh, 19 minutes, maybe. Okay. So, but I had to go and, you know, model it myself and for that, which it wasn't that hard to do. And I just had it oriented correctly and it printed. Uh, I, I took isopropyl alcohol with me, too, and a cloth because I wanted to make sure my print bed was going to be cleaned off where right. I was going to be putting it. Because, I mean, when I went and loaded up, I have a truck. So it actually had to go in the bed of my truck because I didn't have the room in the front. <clears throat> so I spoke with alcohol. Perfect. But I also put it in one of my containers so kids couldn't get to it. Right. So I kept things out of reach of kids. My little scraper spatula I took, and my um, wire brushes to clean the end of the nozzle off I took, I wanted to make sure... If I needed to fix my printer, I could fix my printer. 
there on the spot. I took my little toolkit that came with my Kiwi Tech as well. So if you got a 3D printer that you're going to take, you want to make sure you've got the necessities to fix your printer with you. So I got Allen keys there with it. I've got a little wrench with it. So if I had gotten a clog, I can unclog it and be good to go. <clears throat> so take your printer, take your printing tools with you, uh, something to clean your print bed. If you've got like a glass bed or a textured bed, if you're not doing um, painter's tape, if you painter's tape, you, you, more than likely you won't need it because you're going to have to keep applying painter's tape more than anything. That's how it was for me whenever I first started. Uh, <clears throat> but I would tell people about the printers. And then I had actually multiple people ask about my printer that I had there going. Um, <clears throat> so take what's a necessity. Now, obviously, <clears throat> Brian had said this before the stream started. And I think during the stream started, have somebody with you. Yes. Because you will be busy. I was busy. You need an uh, emergency backup human being sometimes. Yeah, yeah you, you do. I was, so I got there just after eight Saturday morning. I had eaten two bars, like little granola bars, and a Powerade. That was all I had until two o'clock in the evening. Some friends came by and I, I was able to get, get some actual water. They brought me a glass of water because I was talking the entire time. And that was the only thing I had until after I got home about seven o'clock at night. Wow. Yeah. So, so I would, you know, lesson learned, bring bottled water and snacks. Snacks. Yeah. So in case you cannot leave, if you are the only one at your booth and you've got stuff that you don't want to leave unattended, make sure you've got a couple of bottles of water and some snacks. And perhaps even an adult diaper. <laughs> oh my god, Paul, Brian. I, mean, I, I don't, I mean, I'm passionate about 3D printing, but I mean, that takes dedication. <laughs> I'm sorry, the pen. Are you gonna stay here all day and not take a break? Depends. <laughs> <laughs> So <laughs> definitely take a, a backup person if you can get someone to go with you. If not, make sure you don't have a bunch of things that will be messed with. This is not sponsored. This is not a sponsored video. <laughs> <clears throat> so once you've got your stuff that you've planned out, got your snacks, got your water, parried, your, your, your drink, do recommend you do not take pop one if it spills you're going to have a sticky situation and if it's in a bottle it's a little easier to handle but you want to stay hydrated so water powerade gatorade flavored water if that's what that's that floats your boat there take all your tools that you need for your printer if you're taking a printer to fix any issues you have coming up with your printer, if it's printing, um, have your backup person. I, I recommend having a backup person. Um, take as little as possible. And if you want to sell at the Maker Fair, plan ahead, have an inventory built up, and have prices set. And that way you can sell X, Y, and Z and you, if they ask if you got anything to sell, yes, this is what I'm selling. I have a little price down below it that says Ocarina. If you're printing on Ocarina, X amount of dollars. You know, mini figurines for D&D, &D, X amount of dollars. <clears throat> All this and the other. You can have multiple ones. You can have ones that are finished that cost more, ones that are unfinished that cost, ones that are unfinished that cost less, and ones that are finished that cost more. So if you want to do that, you know, just make sure you have an inventory. So you got to think about these things. I didn't think about selling anything. So I wasn't going to want to, didn't want to spend the money to do the, the, uh, the selling in Springfield form. It's like, I don't, so I, I don't guess it's, I guess it's true that you have to spend money to make money. 
You do. Yeah, you really do. <laughs> so I didn't want to. I didn't want to go and spend the money on it. <clears throat> like I was already spending all this time on doing this that I had three weeks to do. Um, which uh, here's a here's my advice: Do not rush. Do not rush your three D prints. I'm trying to put out things. I've been printing for almost four years now. Uh, come March, it'll be about four years that I've been 3D printing. And I've had less failed prints. I've had failed prints. I've had canceled prints. But I had more failed prints rushing through things, trying to get things to print to be ready for the Maker Faire. So do not rush yourself. That way, once you have actually gone through and done your maker to get ready for your maker fair, you don't have a bunch of wasted plastic just sitting there. <clears throat> so, I mean, I 3D printed a couple of things that I didn't even take. I actually 3D printed a, um, there's a thing on Thingiverse. There's a, a little turtle that you crank the little thing for. Oh, you didn't take the turtle? It broke. Like, I, oh, I actually had it all put together and I was cranking it. One of the little arm things that actually makes it move broke. I was like, well, I'm not taking this now. And I was really disappointed because I actually 3D printed the turtle three times. Yes, three. Yeah. So one, one, one actually had a, uh, a, like a layer shift on it. So the actual neck of the turtle would not even move. It was all welded and kind of messed up. So I was like, well, I can't do this. What well, did you print it with? Did you print it on your kitty tech? Or on your I printed on the kitty tech because I actually what I did was I had it here with me, started the print, and on the kitty tech I can pause it and then resume later. So I wanted to try that function out because it saves it to the the SD card. You can do it if you've got your SD card in there. Um, and so then I moved it back and then started it up. And it looked like it was gonna be fine, but apparently there was a layer shift in it somehow. So, <laughs> so whenever I went to pull it off, I was like, oh, well, this isn't gonna do me good. I gotta start the print again. Well, think of it this way though. At least it broke before the show and this didn't break at the show. This is true. Also. And that's that's another key thing is don't bring sturdy up. things. <laughs> bring sturdy things. I had things that people actually broke. Um, there was a, a 3D printed Onyx. I took a little, a little low poly Pokemon to show. Some kid, uh, when I wasn't looking, I mean, I let people touch the, the, the 3D printed things, kind of get their hands on, look at things. That's what it was all for. Some little kid was messing with it. Snapped the end of the tail off, didn't say a thing, just sat down and walked away. Kid, if you're walking, low poly you know, they're in like 25 cents in filament, man. All right. Well, <clears throat> and, you know, and I'm fine if something gets messed up, you know, that happens. But if you break something, then you just walk away. You don't say, oh, I'm sorry, this, I accidentally broke this. Shame on you. I mean, come on, just and I had Yeah. Yep. That's I what he's likely to break right there. Pikachu didn't break. So really? Yep. And I guess the next place he's likely to break is here. Yep. Have you seen that video that Joel Telling did of the low poly Pikachu and the infill percentage? Yes, that was forever ago. It was like I saw that a long time ago, and that's why this guy is three walls and no infill. And he's glow in the dark. Awesome. <laughs> Somewhere around here I have a UV flashlight. I wonder if it would glow on camera. Do you have a hardened steel nozzle to print three uh, your glow in the dark, or are you just using a regular brass one, Brian? I do now. I didn't when I printed this a long time ago, but okay. in, in the interim between then and now, I have <laughs> replaced the hot end. This was printed on a mono price maker select plus. Okay. And I no longer have stock hot ends on those. I have micro Swiss all metal hot ends. Oh, there you go. <laughs> so Brian, we were, this was actually a topic on, on our, our previous uh, AC show, but we talked about hardened steel nozzles 
and the effect that they have on temperature. Have you noticed any any issues with your micro Swiss nozzle? I have not. Um, but then again, with the micro Swiss all metal hot end, you generally have to print about uh, 10 degrees hotter, five or 10 degrees hotter than you ordinarily would. Just yeah, because what, the thermal properties of it are, are a little bit different. We mentioned with, with hardened steel nozzles, because they have different thermal properties, you have to tan, you have to print like, I had to print at least 15 degrees hotter than I normally would have to get the layers to stick together properly. Interesting. Which I haven't really noticed that, but then again, like I said, I'm normally printing hotter anyway. Right. Well, for me to print something like Pet G that needs to print at like 250 or 255, you know, my printer only goes to 260 and uh, just trying to print something that needs to be printed at 275 is just too hot. When you're printing that hot or what kind of hot end are you using? Is it is it an all metal hot end or is it still PTFE lined? Um, it is. It's PTFE line. It's the stock Ender 3 hot end. That I use. OK. <laughs> but I use Capricorn tubes, at least, which have a higher okay. resistance. It's not the regular white PTFE. Not the white stuff. The white yeah. stuff. Oh, Oreo. Oh, Oreo. Oh, I need to. You know, I need to actually. white stuff. Yeah. We are in Canadian, yes, I'm oh, yeah. I'm a I man from back in the 80s, man. I hate that, and I need to put some Capricorn in there for the uh, the tube that it has in there to, for the uh, higher temperatures that I'll print with. Which next time, next time I swap my my tubing out because I, I usually every like month or so I'll I'll clip the end off of it. And it just gets shorter and shorter, and then eventually it gets too short to actually use. The next time I swap out my thing, I'll, I'll just send you my Capricorn tubing that's like this long, and you'll be set for like a year. There we go. That works for me. Uh -huh. <clears throat> but yeah, so I've got a, um, a um, hardened steel nozzle, which I got for filament that I've yet to print. It, I have a, a um, carbon fill fire carbon fiber fill filament okay um and it is maker geek those guys which have gone to the wayside they are they are out of business they don't advertise those anymore. yeah they, former they, they, guys yeah so they yeah. are gone. a lot of people give maker geeks a lot of crap but i actually really like their pla filament i i that's that's or or what's left of it <laughs> well, I mean, so I still, I still actually have a lot of the Maker Geek filament. It's mostly what I have. Me too. And I am transitioning out of it because I'm, I'm running out. I had a lot of orange because I 3D printed all those pumpkins, mm -hmm. so I had extra orange as well. Uh, and I almost printed a pumpkin to take. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Do you concur? I agree. <laughs> he makes a good point. Yeah, he does. <laughs> I gotta shift my chair over so you can't see that I haven't taken the trash out yet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm bothered that I can't find my little UV flashlight. I know it's around here. I've seen it recently. It's probably buried under all its junk on my desk. Brian, can we just can we just mention the uh, Christmas story lamp right there behind you? Like I was right actually there. going to say the same thing. Can we just can we just all take a second and just appreciate that? Is actually, that hang on just a second. Call? I'll I'll turn that on for you. Let me find the right button to click. There we go. Yes, <laughs> Brian and his technical wonders that he has he's got buttons he presses for lights yes oh us modern people flip switches how pedestrian 
How to tell me? Do you have any red corn? <laughs> hey, you got any of that yellow redneck mustard? <laughs> so. So I I, uh, I hope you all have enjoyed the uh, the topics we've talked about on this episode of the OC show. It's been a lot of fun doing this and hanging out with Mr. Carol Science over here and Brian, aka BV3D. Uh, so as always, we do this every week. Next week it will be on Mr. Carol Science's channel. If I can get my finger pointing in the right way. Subscribe uh, to my channel. It's really, really oh, good. Yeah. It's the best I'm channel even, ever. I'm looking at the at the stream on YouTube, not here. Okay, so there. <laughs> you're pointing at that thing, right? Yep. There you go. That thing? The, your name there. Oh, I thought he was pointing Mr. at Mr. Carol Science. That thing? <laughs> Mr. Carol Science 3000. <laughs> Man, I got projects that you want. So we, uh, we have a special topic that we're going to talk on next week for the show. And we have a uh, another guest coming on for next week's show, so we're super excited to uh, have that happen next week. Um, May we ask who it is, or is it a secret? Uh, so I have two thoughts on that. If we reveal who it is, it might draw more people to watch the stream, <laughs> but keeping it a surprise is more mysterious. Well, so I he's not following me, but I follow him, so I couldn't send him a direct message. So I had to um, tweet out his this this question to him. Well, I, I suppose that means that uh, now we have to go look at your tweet history. If you follow Aaron on Twitter, uh, well, no. then you have to just figure out who the special guest is. Yes. Tweet history. history. It's uh, but let's just say it's very relevant. Yes, it is very relevant. And this person, I they have a video out on this subject, which is why I thought this person was perfect for the show. Uh, asked him actually if he would be on tonight's show, and he could not. He was traveling tonight. Um, traveling to Earth. 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 Of course, there's a lot of people traveling to Earth right now, so maybe maybe he'll check out this this uh, video and give it a watch. You never know. Yeah, but um, we will at the beginning of next week. We will we will announce who it is. If you don't follow me on Twitter and all that, um, we'll probably have Mr. Carol Science tweeted out who it is. Um, and I'll retweet that as well if you follow me. Uh, so on Twitter, you can find BV3D down here at, what is your Twitter? Uh, my, my Twitter handle is Brian underscore Vines. And Mr. Carol I Science. I typed in BV3D and I found it. So. Yeah, it'll, it'll figure it out. And Chris's Twitter handle is? At Mr. Carol Psy, because they don't have to no, they don't not, have enough characters for Mr. Carl Science, so it's at Mr. Carl Science. <laughs> and you can find mine at underscore underscore T H O N because they wouldn't let me put T H O N. I wonder why. Because somebody else has that as their their thing, which is completely irrelevant to the actual thing. You should go That's check it out. Fake, like, fake fawn. Yeah, I was just like that at the real time. So the marathon. <laughs> so Raz one said it will be Bozo the Clown, right? That's <laughs> not Raz one. That's one Raz. One Raz. I always say it Raz one. Okay, I, Why? I always put like Rogue one, only different. Rogue one. Yeah. <laughs> Not going to be both of the clown. Much more educated, I think. Much, much more educated. And uh, he was very, very appropriate for this this subject. So 
What's well, the subject well, again? <laughs> Oof. You know, let's we can reveal the subject. I think so. Yeah, you go ahead and reveal the subject. Next, so next week we're going to be talking about uh, Lego's copyright claims against um, makers. Makers, yeah. And so we've we've found someone who's maybe not necessarily an expert on the topic, but definitely has some experience on the topic. Yep. Would this be someone whose first name starts with the letter J? Yes. Mm -hmm. And and ends with O, as in O E. I think so. But. I know you probably know who we're talking about. He professes a lot of things, does he not? He does. <laughs> he does. I so, like that guy. Yeah, me too. Yeah, as, as we all do. So so thank you, everybody, from myself, Aaron, the Handy Outdoor Nerd, and Mr. Carol Science, and BB3D down there. We appreciate you for uh, tuning into the stream. So catch Chris and I next week on his channel. Same time, same place. Along with that same person who jokes. we shall not name. Yes. And I'm speaking. Thank you, by the way. This was fun. Well, thank you. Thanks I'm, for coming, Brian. It was, was really nice. a blast having you here. The time really just kind of flew by, didn't it? Yeah, it, it, it did. It's one in the morning already. And yeah. It's only 11 o'clock here. <laughs> yeah. So, and so. I'm not a bad parent, but keep my child awake. So, wait. <laughs> no, no, no. The longer you keep him awake, the better he'll sleep. The later he sleeps in tomorrow. <laughs> <It's true. laughs> Five so, in the morning, he's like, Daddy. <laughs> so we will, we will be on Thursday nights to, at nine, uh, 10 o'clock your time? It's, uh, uh, yep. Yeah, 10 o'clock your time. 10 o'clock your time until September. daylight savings time kicks in. I live in Arizona, and we don't have daylight savings time, so every time the time zones change, it just messes me all up. Uh, you got you got daylight wastings time. I don't understand what the purpose of daylight savings time is in the first place. Like, well, it had to do with back when we were primarily so like, agrarian and we had yes, lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of farmers. Yep. And in order for them to not have to say, I have to wake up at four in the morning instead of five, they made the clocks to where they were five. Just, rather than <laughs> actually just wake up earlier, we just changed the clock and wake up earlier anyway. I, yeah, you're I still know. so you're still waking up at that time, but you're like, oh well, it's it's only five o'clock still. <laughs> I get to sleep in a little. Yeah, but see, well, the reason I love Arizona is because the time it is is always the time it is, and uh, I never have to. I don't. I never have That's to. That's the way about. to do it. Oh, it's great. <laughs> we should do it everywhere. Sure. <laughs> so it's, it's ten o'clock Pacific time. Ten o'clock Pacific time. Twelve o'clock. A.M. Friday, Central Standard Time, for me. So anybody from the Midwest on, your Central Standard Time, or New York Standard Time. That's an hour ahead. <clears throat> which you. would be an hour ahead, which would be one o'clock if you're out on the East Coast. One o'clock if you live in New York, or yeah, if, if you're in New York, in you're summer. watching the future version of the stream. <laughs> <laughs> So, but we we appreciate everyone who's uh, joined in, and if you're watching this later on, we greatly appreciate you to, to watch it. Uh, if you're not already subscribed to me, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Uh, Ooh, let me I, hit that. I, I greatly appreciate all the uh, subscriptions that you do, um, and I will be putting out some more videos hopefully here soon. I've got a lot to kind of segment and kind of start putting out. If you're not subscribed to Mr. Carl Science. Go ahead, subscribe to Mr. Carol Science. Get his account. That's super cool. There. And if, you, if you're not sus subscribed to BV3D down there, Brian would appreciate your subscriptions. Um, and I will go ahead and put this out there. I actually, at the Maker Fair, I was asked on my 3D pins, and I had said I had done, I had done a giveaway, and I, I was asked when the next giveaway is going to be. Well, when I hit 500 subscribers, I will be doing a 3D pin giveaway. Mm -hmm. Again, cool. And I might actually do a two 3D pin giveaway. One for the local people here, because I want to kind of help the uh, the to, to inspire my local uh, kids and makers and everything. And then it's not going to be international because I can't do international. Sorry, guys. It will still be the United States. But 
So I'll probably do two 3D pin giveaway. But that will be after I hit 500 subscribers. Are you going to hit each and every one of them? Yes. Yes, I will. <laughs> well, line up. He, only, he only has to hit 500 of them. So, like, it could be when he has 700 subscribers, but he's going to hit 500 of them. By slacking on the last 200. Right. He's going to get to, like, 499. He's going to be all... <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna get 499 and then he's gonna remember that he made a former youtube account another one and subscribe to himself so he's gonna just <laughs> number five. what 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 i think i'll do is i'll have a uh, simone gertz um just make a, a, sh a robot and have it just smack people <laughs> <laughs> it will hit all the subscribers there we go nice legs Nice. <laughs> so, all right, everybody, thank you for joining. And we'll catch you next time on Mr. Carl's Science Channel for the show, the coolest show on YouTube. So, y'all, happy making. Take care. See you next Bye, week. Bye, everybody. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.